Good morning, crews. Dave Bill and Carmen at the Joy FM. We've got Louis Giglio with us this morning. The book is uh, Not Forsaken. And we were talking about DNA and the paternity test. We talked about the two trees. DNA keeps popping up in the book, this idea of DNA. And I'm going to, uh, I was telling them uh, this morning, when you read the book in a hurry, it all gets conflated in your head. And you forget which part of the book is this story in and how does it relate to that. And I was going through it last night to try and get some of that squared away. So I'm going to do something unusual. Bill likes to go chapter by chapter. Yes, that's what he was trying to talk us into doing. Ten breaks, ten chapters. Yeah. Yes, makes I, when we said ten breaks, it's like ten chapters. Of, no. Can't do it because I, I want to take a story from here yeah. and a story from here in the book <laughs> and see if we can kind of squish them together because we were talking about blessing and we're talking about DNA and I've done the paternity, the, the spit test, by the way, and done the ancestry.com and we're talking about, well, we are, are about to be talking about modeling because all of this works together. So like there's a place where you talk about, and, and I've said it, I will never do this. My dad <laughs> made me work in his garden. His dad had an acre and a half garden. So I grew up having to weed the garden, cut the okra, pick the tomatoes. I said, I will never plant a garden. My dad was my baseball coach. I said, I will never coach little league baseball. How are your crops looking this year? <laughs> well, I don't have them planted this year, but the first thing I did... <laughs> First thing I did he when I bought a house, exactly where planted you're a garden. Uh -huh. <laughs> and when my son was 12, I coached his baseball team. So, you know, some things you just can't fight. Mm -hmm. But I, I want to look at blessing and modeling. Mm -hmm. and, and the two stories that I'm thinking about are uh, your dad's reaction when you told him you were being called to preach and the picture of Shelly and her dad mm -hmm. and the, uh, the sunglasses. Yeah. Well, it's a powerful force. Uh, DNA and modeling are undeniable. And I, li I always like to say it and I laugh, depending on which uh, demographic you're in, it's still up for debate. If you're a middle schooler, it's totally up for debate. I will not <laughs> be like my parents. If you're 39, mm -hmm. um, you you're already have heard your spouse, if you're married, say to you, so be for you, your wife, Bill, saying, um, yeah. what's your mom's name? Jean. Jean, mm -hmm. is that you? Yeah. Have yep. you heard that before? Yep. Yeah, you, I've heard <laughs> just like your mother. So yeah. my mom's name is Martha Jean. So mm -hmm. occasionally Shelly will look at me and say, excuse me, uh, Martha Jean. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't say I'm not acting like Martha Jean right now. I go, oh, wow. You mm -hmm. know, it's real. And um, I, I talked in the book about my dad and, um, you know, we can get into it later. But my dad was amazing. A really incredible guy, especially when at the end of his life, I learned how void he was of a father's blessing. Mm. Right. And given that he never had a blessing from his father and had no relationship with his dad, his dad died when I was a baby, one years old. Wow, he was a good dad. But we didn't have common ground around our faith. And so for me, it was a surprise when God called me to preach. I didn't see it coming. And my dad certainly didn't see it coming. If I didn't see it coming, he didn't see it coming. And uh, Dr. Stanley, when I told him, I feel like the Lord's calling me to preach, he told me to go away for two weeks and pray about it, come back. So the two weeks had passed, and I'm convinced this is what God wants me to do. And I'm going to go down on the Sunday night service and surrender to ministry, mm -hmm. surrender to preach. I don't right. know if anybody listening today remembers that church, but that's where we all were. And I needed to tell my dad because I wanted him to come. And Monday, I didn't tell him. Couldn't get up the nerve. Tuesday, couldn't get up the nerve. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we went to church Sunday morning. My mom, my sister, me came home. Still hadn't told him. So now it's 3 p.m. Service is at 7. And I've got to invite my dad. So I walk into the kitchen in our little apartment here in Atlanta. And my dad's eating leftovers out of a pot on the stove. I can remember it like we're standing there right now. And I just fumble and I kind of uh, get the words out dad I uh, I feel like God's calling me to preach and man my dad his expression was I just a caught him off guard this is not about my dad this is about bad timing on my part but he just froze and he looked at me and I could just see the wheels turning and his friends were his poker buddies and his golf buddies and all their sons were doing something cool and I could just see the next time they were at the poker game. So, so Lou, tell us again, what's your, what's your kid doing? Uh, <clears throat> he, uh, he's, uh, he's going to be a Baptist preacher. <laughs> you know, mm. 
uh, deal me in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so the awkward thing was my dad didn't come that night. He said, that's great, Ace. That's all he ever said. And, um, and he just didn't know what to do with that. But he didn't come that night. We didn't talk about it the next day, the next week, the next month, the next year. I mean, I graduated college and went off to grad school to be a pastor. And my dad and I never talked about that conversation. But God redeemed that. And I talk about in the book, very, very powerful way, like mm -hmm. your story, Carmen, mm -hmm. where God brought all that back around in a very profound way so that I have confidence, even though my dad's been gone 26 years mm -hmm. now, or something, I need to add it up again, a long time out of my life, I have the confidence when I'm communicating that I know my dad is proud of the gift that I have, even if we didn't share that common ground of faith. But that... That blessing is important. Then we talked about modeling and just talking about Shelly, her dad, and uh, looking back at old photographs, and we all can do this, and you see yourself standing next to your dad, like Shelly and her dad are out on family vacation in the mm -hmm. middle of, you know, Colorado somewhere on the side of the road, and they're just standing like no one told them. Now, Shelly, you look like your dad. You get the sunglasses on like dad has. You, you put your hand on your hip like dad, you know? We just do it. We watch them every day of our lives. And so by virtue of our DNA and the modeling of our lives, we are destined. That's a strong word. Mm -hmm. We are destined to be like our parents. It is going to happen. And the more we say it's not, uh, we're really just reinforcing that it is. Because every sentence that begins with, I will never, mm -hmm. is rehearsing what we don't want to do, not leading us towards what we do want to do. That's when you order black coffee and ice water together. 